Tonight on the Bayou Breakdown, LSU baseball drops yet another SEC series, an analysis of the defensive players in this year's draft class, and the student government election results are in. There's so much more to come. The Bayou Breakdown starts right now. Good evening and welcome to the Bayou Breakdown. I'm Madeline Frentress. And I'm Jada Ferris. So Madeline, we have a lot to cover tonight. Baseball, football, and on top of that, the student government elections are here. But that's later on. That's right, Jada. So LSU baseball continued their SEC skid as they fell to Vanderbilt this weekend. Reporter Kennedy Banks is in the studio with more. Kennedy? Thanks, guys. LSU baseball has lost another SEC series in six of their last seven games after this weekend's loss to the Vanderbilt Commodores. While the Tigers took home the first win of the three-game slate, pitching troubles were the nail in the coffin. Pitching quickly became a problem as the Commodores' bats were hitting on all cylinders. With four players batting above 313 total runs scored, the Commodores blew through the bullpen. So I don't know that it's, it's much about anything other than, you know, got to finish the games that we can win. And uh, certainly tried to do that, and we'll try a different way. We are trying a different way. Um, I was hoping that I would get some answers in how to do that with how we had the game set up today. But I, I mean, we didn't get anybody out. So, you know, I can't say that I'm, I'm closer to that. As the game progressed, the Tigers went through six pitchers, four of them within the first innings, including going deep within the depth chart and pulling Jaden Newt and Micah Bucknam onto the mound. The scarcity of consistent pitching on the offense has raised big concerns. Uh, my opinion is we should have somebody else that you can go to. And right now we don't. And that's, uh, there's a lot of um, reasons for that. And am I surprised about that? I'm really surprised about that. I will tell you I'm surprised about that. While star pitcher Luke Holman has cemented himself as the number one guy, the problem of who's up next has yet to be solved. The Tigers will look for a home win when they take on the McNeese Cowboys Tuesday, April 9th at 6.30 p.m. looking for a bounce back victory. Flipping into Fort Worth, LSU Gymnastics won the Fayetteville Regional Championship Saturday night with a score of 198.250 to advance the NCAA semifinals in Texas. The Tigers will compete starting Thursday night against Arkansas, California, and Stanford. The top two teams from Thursday will advance to the Final Four. There are four teams that will represent the SEC, and Jay Clark is looking forward to the excitement that awaits. Not necessarily as a head coach all, the, all those years, obviously, but just... It's it's exhilarating, it's nerve-wracking, it's all the things that you would expect, but I don't feel a, a sense of urgency. I know, I know I'm comfortable knowing that this program is on a trajectory towards in the right direction to – and eventually, you know, Didi used to say this all the time, and it was a saying that stuck with me that I think is very apropos. You hang around the goal long enough, you'll score. If the Tigers advance to the regional, or if the Tigers advance to the Final Four, they will have the chance to grab their first national championship. Last year, they finished fourth in the Final Four. This year, they are looking to take the final spot, the top spot. With the NFL draft right around the corner, LSU will be well represented. David Bartholomew is in the studio with a breakdown of some of the Tigers' best. Guys, LSU is saying goodbye to five of their defensive players in this year's draft. While every Tiger has to go off eventually and find their new home. Let's look at each de defensive player and try to find the right spot for them. Let's start off with Makai Wingo, who no question was one of the most consistent players for this LSU defense this year, even though he suffered that injury late into the season. While he was on the field, he was nice size, had a lot of explosivity off that ball, created chaos behind the line of scrimmage, which is what you like to see. But if we were to look at some cons to his game, I mean, one of the biggest problems for Makai Wingo, I'd say, is just he's undersized. And in the NFL, that can probably be stopped through the double team. But hey, they said the same thing about Aaron Donald, and he had a Hall of Fame career. So let's move on to his counterpart in Mason Smith, who, in my opinion, has the most potential out of everybody coming out of, the, um, out of LSU this year. Lots of size, 6'4", 316 pounds, when healthy, a force on the field, creates a lot of chaos, just like Makai. Lots of agility there, too. One of the biggest cons for him is probably that he's coming off of this injury. You don't know how he's going to play 100%, and he didn't have 
the most effective season. And also relying on that brute strength, we want to see some more technique work. But sticking on to that defensive line, let's take a look at Jordan Jefferson, who was a quiet storm for LSU whenever he was on the field. Great at stopping a run, great size. He's 6'2", 316, ran a 5'1". Like I said, helps a lot with that run stop. One of the things that was probably his problem this season on top of the lack of film is probably just the agility and fluidity, which is nothing that you can't work on, of course. So that size will definitely find a great home. Let's take a couple steps back off the line of scrimmage and look at Omar Spates, who was a linebacker, came in this season from Texas and didn't miss a beat for this LSU defense. Great fluidity on those hips. Nice footwork, good footwork, can turn in and out. He can rush and he can do pass protection. Some of the cons to his game would probably be that Omar Spates likes to bite the ball a lot. He's very fast, can get behind that line of scrimmage, but you're in there too quick. You lose track of the running back. Something that could be worked on, though, with just some technique. Finally, last but not least, let's take a look at, at that secondary and get into Andre Sam, who also came in his senior year and made an immediate impact for that LSU defense. I mean, just look at him. He's a ball hawk has great speed, just finds the ball, plays the game really loose. You can see that he's not thinking much when he's out there, and that really does help him, but it can also come to a detriment as Andre Sam is one of those reckless players, does have some poor tackling technique. He'll just lay his shoulder out there, but definitely not anything that's unsavable. <laughs> so with all that being said, be sure to be on the lookout for these guys as they come into the league soon, and make sure to stay up to date with us because after the break, the announcement of the student government election will come your way. Don't go anywhere. We're Tiger TV, LSU's student-run broadcast news station. We're bringing you four newscasts a week covering all things LSU. Our news team is covering all the stories you need to know from LSU's campus and the Baton Rouge community. And our sports team has you covered on the Tigers from the field to the court. Tiger TV, sports, news, you. Watch us on WBRZ 2 Plus, channel 11 at 1110. Welcome back to the Bayou Breakdown. The results of the student government presidential election has just been announced. So we go, to, we go live to reporter Cooper Dick, who is at the Huey P. Long Fieldhouse with the winners. Hi there. I, I'm here live at the Huey P. Long Fieldhouse, where we are currently awaiting the results of the presidential election. They are, being, they are announcing Senate and College Council right now. We are seeing a lot of evenly matched between Empower and Energize. And <laughs> has won the student government presidential election. We are flagging down the candidates right now to get a live interview. Please stand by. This is a big win for sophomores Joseph Liberto and Amelia Carmen, who are celebrating right now with their team, and they are quickly making their way over here right now. We are sorry for the delay. Yes, this is a very big win for the Energized Ticket. A lot of what they have been promising have been certain reforms to parking passes. Um, and we are here with the candidates live now who got endorsement from the IFC and from uh, LSU football players. I'm here with Joseph Liberto, 
Joseph, how does it feel to win this election? Oh, that's crazy. This is this is absolutely nuts. They, you just got pulled right off. This is this is crazy. Oh my gosh, this is the best feeling ever. Amelia should be running. <laughs> this is amazing. Amelia. Okay, we're here with Amelia Carmen. <laughs> How does it feel to win this election? Um, it actually is so surreal. I cannot believe I'm in this place, in this position. Um, it's been a long-awaited journey, and I'm so blessed to be here with my best friend. This is this is great, too. This is this is amazing. This is amazing. All right, well, that's great to hear. Um, and so, guys, I just wanted to talk a little bit about one of your things, the Red Zone Awareness. Could you tell us a little bit more about how you plan to implement that? I think it's important that we advocate for women's needs and. Um, Sorry, my adrenaline is so high right now. And to um, help people, um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Give me a second. My adrenaline is so crazy right now. Well, it is certainly an exciting night here at the field house. <laughs> Come on, group. Okay, okay, this I got my Alrighty, we're ready. Okay, so I think it's important that we take this uh, red zone awareness a lot more seriously <laughs> and help implement it a lot more campus. As you asked, how would we implement it? Um, just taking more steps for dorm halls, for welcome week, to really advocate for this and let the freshmen know. Great. Well, I'd like to thank you both all for being here. We are expecting the inauguration to happen later in April. We will have more as it comes out. For Tiger TV, I'm Cooper Dick. Thanks, Cooper. Moving from LSU's student government to Louisiana's government, Brian Kelly met with the media on Saturday to discuss all things LSU football and even Governor Jeff Landry's scholarship request. Governor Landry urged for LSU and the NCAA to pull scholarships from student athletes who are not present for the national anthem. This comes after video of LSU's women's basketball team missed the national anthem during their pregame of the Sweet 16 appearance. LSU is known for their elaborate pregame shows decked with fireworks, smoke, and amazing hype videos. Brian Kelly says if the rules change, his team will be present and stand proud for the national anthem. Uh you know, our football players would echo this, is that if, if at any time we're required to be out there, we're gonna be wherever we're told to be. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's the bottom line. You know, if our administration wants us out there for the national anthem, we're gonna stand proud for the national anthem. Um, it's just the way that it has been scripted, and I've been doing it for 33 years. I can't, I can, on a, on my hand, I can tell you how many times I've been out for the national anthem in 33 years. That's not to say that we're against what the governor is, is saying. We understand where the governor's coming from. We'll, we'll relook at the policies, and, and I think I stand by what Scott has said. Kelly and the Tigers are wrapping up spring number three of the BK era, and fans can see this team on full display Saturday, April 13th at the spring game. When we get back, see how astrology lovers all across the country gathered for the solar eclipse. We're Tiger TV, LSU's student-run broadcast news station. We're bringing you four newscasts a week covering all things LSU. Our news team is covering all the stories you need to know from LSU's campus and the Baton Rouge community. And our sports team has you covered on the Tigers from the field to the court. Tiger TV, sports, news, you. Watch us on WBRZ 2 Plus, Channel 11 at 1110. Welcome back to the Bayou Breakdown. So as you may know, today was a solar eclipse and LSU students and faculty sat in the rain to try and spot it. The overcast weather was a hindering factor for those out on the parade grounds this afternoon who tried to catch a glimpse. There were good numbers, but for those who wanted to see it, they'll have to wait until 2044 for the next one to roll around. So Madeline, have you ever experienced a solar eclipse? I know there was one back in 2017. I haven't, Jada. I was inside all day today. And I mean, even if I did go outside, the clouds were, uh, it was covering the sky. I couldn't even see it. Yeah, being from Florida, normally we get like 30%, 40% totality. So I was really excited for today hearing that 80%. But you know, some things just happen and the rain couldn't keep it away. But I was, I'm excited for 2044. I will <laughs> definitely be looking yeah. out for that one. Hopefully I remember to mark it on my calendar then. <laughs> So that's all we have for tonight. Make sure to follow our socials and visit our website at tigertv.tv for updates on all things LSU. And don't forget to watch Tiger TV's own podcast, The Purple Room, which talks all things LSU sports, entertainment, culture, every Friday on YouTube and Spotify. That's it for now. For Tiger TV, I'm Madeline Frentress. And I'm Jada Ferris. Thanks for watching and have a great night.